Yo 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 Yes, it's Tuesday. It's definitely Tuesday, man. Uh, how y'all feeling out there? My anxiety is on 10 this morning. Why is your anxiety on 10 this morning? Another school shooting always puts my anxiety uh, uh, above where it needs to be. Uh, you're not used to it by now? No. Mm. Never used to it, especially when it comes to my babies and my kids. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it's sad that uh, I, hate, I hate when I hear politicians say, uh, uh, this, isn't, this isn't us. The America, this isn't who we are. No, this is exactly who we are. This is who we've always been, sadly. Yeah. This is this is culture. You know, how they say uh, American is apple pie. No, they should start saying uh, as American is as 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 mass shootings. That's what they should start saying. Yeah. yeah. Very scary. Mm-hmm. Very scary, and, and it puts me back to you know uh, Mexican president. Remember, when Mexican president says y'all talking about how how bad Mexico is. Have you guys looked in the mirror? Then I start looking at all these shootings. This is like the nineteenth mass shooting, I think, something like that. I don't even know what the number is. And this is, is in, at this in, point. In, in what we in March? Nineteen I, I, mass shootings already. I've I've fully accepted that uh, we have a government um, that just doesn't know how to solve problems, mm. and this is just the way things are going to be. And you know, sadly, you have to expect these things every now and then, just like you expect bad weather. No, you can't expect these things though. You know, not when it comes to our babies and our children. You know, no, no I didn't say accept. I said expect. I said, yeah, There's I, a difference. I said expect. I, I don't, I don't, I don't really, want to expect these things. I mean, sadly, it's the country we live in. You know, and, and sadly. People were saying, I seen yesterday, said something about metal detectors, but metal detectors ain't going to stop. You think they're going to stop? No, they're shooting through the school. Like, that person yesterday You got to have metal detectors and armed security. Like, armed you got, security. Yeah, you got to have metal detectors and armed security. I think you need both. Like, and I, and I think that this country has enough money to supply both. To any any place where there's a, a mass group of people, whether it's schools, whether it's uh, places of worship, you know, whether it's malls, this this country can afford that. This country can afford metal detectors and armed security everywhere we go. Because you got to think, these people, I believe, are taking advantage of folks that they, uh, you know, know can't shoot back. They take advantage of Correct. these places where they know these people are vulnerable. Correct. So make these places less vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, it's... It would be a task, but yeah, it, it could be done because you would have to put a, a security officer or a police officer on every door. More than yeah, more than one, absolutely. At every school. Why not? What, what are our taxpayer dollars going to? Right. <laughs> Why not? I have no problem with that. If I knew my taxpayer dollars were going to exactly that, and we could see that everywhere, not just in you know uh, in, in neighborhoods where the taxes are a little bit higher everywhere, I'd be all for it. Because think about it, like you said, vulnerable. Even if you are a licensed gun owner, right? Legally, you're not supposed to carry a gun in a school, around a school. So there's no parents dropping off their kids that legally should be able to have a firearm. So even if you well, are... y'all said y'all didn't want teachers to have firearms either. So I, what about these teachers who I carry... I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. We had a debate about it on the day. I was all for it. I'm like, yo, if you can legally carry a firearm and you know how to shoot and you're a teacher and you feel like bringing a gun to school to protect yourself, I have no problem Maybe with I that. Maybe I did, but not, my mind has changed. Oh, if good. you're legally trained, yes. But you have to be legally trained, right? You yeah. just can't be shooting like you're in menace to society with the gun to the side uh, just popping. You have to you be got legally, legally trained. If you got a legal gun and you keep one in your house and, and you know you, you carry one in your car and you know how to shoot and you're a teacher, you should have you should be able to have your firearm if that makes you feel uh, safer. Mm-hmm. And, you're, and, and, and you being able to uh, handle your gun is going to keep other people safe. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Because, listen, this country is not going to do it. This government is not mm-hmm. going to protect us. So why can't we protect ourselves? All right. Well, why we'll, can't we protect our babies? Well, we'll dive deeper into it in front page news. Tesla and Figaro will be joining us, of course, and she'll break it all down. And we'll hear from the president. And, and Tesla can shoot, too. She's, she's, she's in the military. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> okay. Well, next time Tez come to town, I might ask her to take me to the range. <laughs> what you laughing about? Because I go to the range all the time. But if yeah. she's ex-military, maybe she could teach me teach something. something. Right. Hey, why not? I, yeah. All right. Well, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good yes, morning, right. everybody. Yeah, it's it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get into some front page news. Now, Charlemagne, congratulations to your game, Cox. You already know. South Carolina beat Maryland 86-75. So they advanced to the Final Four. Again. At, and Virginia Tech beat Ohio State. They advanced as well. They beat, uh, they won 84-74. Now, Tesla, Dro- good morning. Dro- hold on, drop on the clues, Bonds with Don Staley and, uh, you know, the lady South Carolina Gamecocks going to the Final Four again. They are the defending national champions. They mm-hmm. are undefeated. They play Iowa on Friday. I can't wait to see that game. All right. Now, Tez, what we got this morning? A lot going on. A lot going on. Uh, 
As you mentioned, we are talking about uh, the unfortunate shooting of uh, children. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, we are dealing with yet another school shooting tragedy, this time at the uh, Covenant School, a private Christian elementary school in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, the story is still developing, but let's take a listen to the report on what we know so far. Mm -hmm. There was a five-member team who was on the, that was on the second floor at that time. Two individuals from that five-member team opened fire on the shooter. We know at this point that this shooter is a female. Uh, she appears to be in her teens. We know that she was armed with at least two assault-type rifles and a handgun. She entered the school through a side entrance and traversed her way from the first floor to the second floor, firing multiple shots. We now know that there are three students who were fatally wounded. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, and, and just kind of recapping, we, we heard uh, the details, but just to clarify, now we do know that uh, the suspect was not uh, a teenage uh, a teenage woman, uh, actually 28-year-old Audrey Hale uh, from Nashville. Uh, and as they dig further uh, into the manifesto, uh, Envy, they are finding out that it indicates that she was transgender mm -hmm. and her possible motive was that she had resentment uh, for having to attend the Christian school. Now, according to data, because you had mentioned you had asked how many shootings have we had this year and yes. according to gun violence archive monday shooting actually marks the 129th oh, I said 19. mass shooting and yep, that's this, is this this year just this year alone jesus Absolutely. christ yep as far as mass shootings now uh firstly and i think the stats you were talking about was uh maybe how many were at school yeah, okay yeah but there's actually been yeah there's actually been 129 uh this year now first lady jill biden was giving a speech at the national league of cities congressional city conference in washington dc and i want uh everybody to pay attention to the slow claps at the end of her remarks when she found out about the shooting in real time let's take a listen we just learned about another shooting in Tennessee, a school shooting. And I am truly without words. And our children deserve better. And we stand, all of us, we stand with Nashville in prayer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, I don't know, man. Basically, um, nobody, you know, they clapped when she was saying, you know, uh, we stand with them. But then when it got to prayer, it just was completely silent. Because like you mentioned earlier, oh, um, people are just tired of thoughts and prayers. That's all they, they want to see action. And it's a shame that I didn't even hear what President Biden said. I didn't hear what First Lady Jill Biden mm -hmm. said, but I knew what they were going to say. Thoughts and prayers and probably pleading the Congress to do something. And, and the problem with all of this stuff is that it's not a new problem. This didn't just start happening in America. This has been a problem for a long time. And one of the reasons I don't think anything will ever get done is because these, you know, pro-gun organizations are too deep in the pockets of these politicians. Mm -hmm. I, I will say this. Um, I, I know there's been a lot of trainings at schools, and I know my kids have trainings at schools if there's an active shooter. Uh, watching the video uh, of of that, uh, whatever that person's name was, running that building and shooting down, if it wasn't for those that training, I think a lot more kids would have been killed because that shooter was walking through that school for a minute trying to find somebody. So however they're training these kids, which is horrible that these kids have to learn that, that training at least is coming in good hands because that, that shooter was, you know, going from room to room looking for kids and it, it wasn't easy for that shooter to find those you kids. Gotta have, I'm telling you, you got to have armed security in these schools. You got to have armed yeah. security in these schools or you got to let the teachers uh, carry their own firearms. Yeah, and again, when we talk about training, I, I've subbed in the schools for years, and one of the things is always having the doors locked. So the side door mm. shouldn't have been, even been unlocked in the first place, you know. Um, and and I agree with you, Charlemagne. I really believe that the, the money is there, the investment is there uh, to hire. Uh, obviously, we can't have police officers at every door, but I do believe they can invest uh, in private security uh, to arm these doors. That's just the bottom line. Wherever there's a door to school, there should be somebody who is armed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, conversation with this online, you know, and I, I, I believe in the Second Amendment. Um, I was a, a, as you mentioned before, a veteran. I was an M60 gunner, um, but I'm very clear with saying that uh, civilians should not have wartime weapons. Right. At the same time, um, I do believe, you know, in protecting myself, and that is where this discussion keeps going. You know, we just need to get rid of all guns. Well, the criminals are not getting rid of them. Correct. So I, I believe that we should be able to protect ourselves, but at the same time, we don't need war, you know, wartime weapons uh, on the street. 
street for civilians. And so body armor. Tell- and body armor. Because, I mean, they said that, that she had body armor on. But, yeah, body armor as well. They- now, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't mind me some damn body armor. The way these mass shootings is happening. You know what I mean? And you, you no place mm-hmm. you're safe. You know what I mean? Nah, but the, the, I wouldn't mind. If you, if you, know, you, ban, body if you ban the body armor. I See, I think you should ban, like you said, those high rifle guns. Absolutely. You don't need that to protect yourself. And you don't need body armor. I want to ask Tez a question. Tez, you are, not only have you been a substitute teacher, you're a uh, veteran. You're a veteran, mm-hmm. right? If you were yes. a substitute teacher and you could carry your firearm in school, would you want to? I absolutely would. I, I encourage my sister. She's been teaching for 25 years, you know, to also do the same. But to Envy's point, I'm, I'm assuming that when you disagree with it earlier, Envy, I'm sure your concern was like many. Will the teachers turn their gun on the children? Correct. You know, so that I, I, I understand both sides of the argument. But until this government protects, uh, you know, our children would. You know, what do we do? But I am concerned, though. There is concern on what these crazy teachers would do to our children as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, training doesn't stop mental illness. Mm -hmm. You know, there's teachers who are mental ill as well. So this is just I I really would like to see private guards at every school uh, like they do in the hood with uh, actual uh, uh, metal detectors. That's right. I grew up with metal detectors, you know, so I would like to see metal detectors, private armed guards at every single school. Yeah, my kids, my kids got metal detectors in their school. Yep. Absolutely. And we all have we all have um, school age children, all three of us. Mm-hmm. So this does bring anxiety, you know, yeah. with mm-hmm. really just wondering when who will be next. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is front page news. We got a lot to dive into next hour. Thank you, Tesla. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Call us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, what up? This is Rome. What up, Andy? Charlamagne? What's what up, up bro? Take us off Bluetooth for speaker if you got us on so we can hear you clear, bro. Hey, I'm a, uh, I'm a truck driver, so you got to bear with me. I got cameras and shit in my truck. All right, all right. We've got, you know what? You stay on speaker. I don't want you to, to crash into anybody. What's up, bro? Get it off your chest. Hey, man, let's, uh, we need to move this conversation and make it about protecting our kids, bro. Everybody want to talk about these guns and stuff, man. Our politician has got security. Our president has got security. That's right. Everywhere else has got security but our damn schools, man. That's it's, right. It's crazy, bro. It makes no sense whatsoever to have all of these kids congregating in all of these different places and they're just vulnerable. Like, there's no protection for them whatsoever. How clubs got better security than the schools? You're right. Facts. Which is the truth. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's going on? This is Tyler. What's up, y'all? Tyler, what's up? Get off your chest. Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on? Just trying to uh, get off my chest, man. Just want to see how everybody was doing. Travel day. How you doing, God? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. How you, King? Hey, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Heavy. What's up, man? I'm excited for that car show, bro. Oh, yeah. I think I want to try to be a vendor, bro. You think you can hook it up? Yeah, or just hit the email if you if you want to be a vendor or, or anybody want to put their car in the show, the Memphis one. Yeah. It's djmvcarshow at gmail.com. I mean, it's... I definitely will. Yeah, but uh, come on through. What's up, Tyler, though? Yo, I got a question, man. So, I'm a business owner, bro. I got a you know, black clothing brand is uh, Dingo. Hopefully, y'all remember. But, uh, man, I just made a big investment. I spent $15,000 on a damn printer to, you know, increase my business and all that. That joint don't even work, bro. I feel like I got duped. It's going to cost me like 3 k to get the joint fixed, and I'm pissed off. You bought it, <laughs> you you know bought it used? Yeah, I bought it used, but it was a reputable source. The guy showed me the videos, everything, bro, and I'm like, cool. Did you call the yeah, guy man, back I and tell him it doesn't bro. work? I did, bro, but he ghosted me ever since, man. Yeah, he probably, he probably <laughs> sold it to you effed up like that, but I mean. Yeah, man. It's crazy, bro. I mean, you can't take him to court, though. You can't, if you want to go through that process, you can't take him to court, and the court will definitely find him guilty and and legal fees. Or, you know, you could fix it and and make your money back, which is which is effed up. Right, which I gotta do, man. So I'm just trying to see if I can maybe drum up some business. You think I can plug the the brand right quick to see if I can throw up some business and get some sales and get the machine fixed? Go ahead, brother. Hey, man, my website is uh, dngo0925 on all platforms, and the brand is called Dingo. So dngo0925 on all platforms. I would really appreciate the love and support, y'all. I'm just trying to get my machine fixed so I can continue to run my business and provide something good for the hood. You know what I'm saying? All right, brother. i see you in Memphis. I appreciate you. Thank you. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. 
even though they should. We know the school isn't going to put metal detectors in. So the teachers got to be able to protect themselves. And like you said, if if you know that maybe a teacher or maybe there's a security guard at a school, that person is less likely to go up and shoot up that you school. You can put a sign up. You can put a sign that said, our teachers are armed. Right. Play if you want you to. You less likely to, to try out. because, like you said, I'm a go. If I'm a shooter, I'm a go to a school where it is vulnerable, where they, nobody That's has right. guns, where there are nothing but kids. But if there's a chance that somebody's going to shoot back, why do people put uh, ADT signs in their yard? Uh, right. Why do Why do you got to uh, say that your sex offender lives here to let to warn people? So you can do the same thing at these schools. Like, yo, our teachers are armed. Uh, we got armed security here. Right. I guarantee you that'll make any school shooter think twice. Hello, who's this? Yo, good morning, DJ Envy. My name is Brad Webb. I'm from Houston, Texas. Good morning, Charlemagne the God. What's up, brother? What's up, Brad? First How off, are you? I'm good, brother. First off, I want to tell both y'all listening to y'all every morning. It's sad that Angela ain't with y'all no more. Real talk, but uh, I listen to y'all every morning. I love both of y'all, man. Y'all Thank you, King. Are real. Appreciate it. We love you, too. It's a, man, that's good to hear from you. <laughs> I do love y'all. You. I love y'all. Y'all, y'all the only reason I get up in the morning. I like coming in here and, and kicking it with, you know, Envy and our listeners. This is I love I love Breakfast Club. I, out of all the things that I do, radio is still my first love. Man, and you can tell, bro, because your passion for it is is beyond belief, beyond belief. But like I said, you know, I get up early every morning. I'm a welder. I'm actually at my job right now an hour early just waiting because oh. I do that every morning. I like to wake up and I like to listen to y'all. Hold on, my brother. How man. old are you? How old are you, young man? I'm 30. Okay, tell me how much money you make a year as a welder. Uh, about this this past year, I made 55000 And where you live at? Houston. Uh, Houston, Texas. That is a good living. I'm, I will, just, I'm saying that because I want more people to start going into trades. Now, I will tell you this, school. though. I was talking to a, a, a trade school the other day. Shout out to Lincoln Tech uh, and Tina. And they were telling me that they need more welders. Yep. Like, you know, people are not necessarily yeah, I mean, jumping into the program. And I, I actually went through the program to learn how to weld because... I'm so cool with Lincoln Tech. They put me through some of those programs. And if, if you are a welder, there are a lot of people that need welding right. when it comes to doing buildings, when it comes to uh, repairing cars, when it comes yeah, to so build, many different I things. I build 18 wheelers, so, I, man, the trade is just wide. I mean, we're looking for people at my job right now. See? So if you're a welder or you want to get into the welding business, maybe you don't have any knowledge, go to school for it because there are people that will, are willing to pay for that. But get it off your chest, brother. I know you call for something else. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to call and talk about what happened in Tennessee, man. You know, I was listening to y'all, Tess, and, and, and first thing I want to say is I agree with everything y'all said, but one thing Tess said, you know, I'm from I'm from Texas, so we got open carry and concealed carry. I own personally myself about 25 to 30 guns, a couple of which are ARs. In my personal opinion, we should be able to have that, that right to hold them just in case we have to go against the government at some point. Not saying it's ever going to happen, but we should have that right to defend ourselves at a specific level of what could come to us. Um, but the next thing I wanted to say was, you know, I agree with Charlemagne. I was just talking to my uncle and uh, a buddy of mine yesterday about this. Every school should have a police officer, if not some kind of security, period. I mean, right. growing up, it was like that for me. I had two cops. I went to a school called Alding. You had to walk through metal detectors. They were always cops armed. You know, they had that authority that if something was to go down, they could take action, but also call for backup, but not stand still. That's right. And I believe that should be everywhere because, you know, I got two kids, a three-year-old and a nine-year-old. If my nine-year-old son comes home and says, Dad, you hear what happened? I'm afraid to go to school. What am I supposed to tell him? I'm not afraid for you because I'm scared too. It could happen. That's right. And as, and as a parent, we should be afraid for something like that. It's not like we can hand our kids a, a gun and say, take care of yourself, because kids are susceptible to, 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 to violence when it comes to being bullied and, and the type of world we're in today. Man, it's, so it's, you it's, can't it's, put a gun in a kid's hand, but, but yet these teachers should be able to, to, to be able to carry. And if it's not carried, maybe a safe under their desk where they got to wear a necklace with their key on their neck. So, you know, it's locked at all times. No kids can get to it. Right. I mean, I'm with I just you, my believe brother. I believe schools should be able to be protected a little bit better. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, it, there was uh, one time with my son Logan. There was an active shooter. Uh, somebody robbed the bank down the block, and they believe he ran through the the you know the parking lot, and they shut it down. Active shooter. That was probably one of the most scariest things ever. Yeah, there's, and, there's nothing you could do. They, yeah, you know, thank God my son had a cell phone, so I threw the dog in the car. Me and the wife ran to the school to try to get him, but. 
you know, what could you do? You, you're sitting there and you're just praying and praying and praying and praying and praying until you get to that school. Now, I got Logan out the school, but it's just one of those things, man. Your anxiety level jumps to a, a thousand when, when yeah, you think about the, these things. And the most scariest thing about this whole situation is we're not even trying. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not even trying to protect our kids at this point. We're not even trying to protect our schools at this point. It's literally the same rhetoric every mm. single time one of these things happen. Absolutely. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We'll tell you what celebrity called Hove at 1130 at night to get dinner reservations. Yeah, well... We'll talk about who did you that. You said called Hove? Yes. Oh, I thought you said called home. Yeah. I had to think about it, but I, I heard the story. That's what I just said called home. Why would you call home to get dinner at No, call Hove. All right, we'll get into it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Hove. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, Damson Idris sat down with Speedy Mormon. They were doing an interview, and he was talking about his relationship with Jay and how Jay has always helped him in his career. Is it true that Jay-Z was a reference for you how could you possibly know that for your green card he was but did i say that how did that conversation go how do you do you ask jay-z does he offer that up like how does that hell they offer that up no i I had to ask him but he's done many things for me over the years he's always supported me to the point i'll be in miami at like 12 a.m i'm like yo i want to go carbone and then they'll have me on facetime like ho would be like Yo, damn shit, you got to win a couple more Emmys before you can call me at 11.30. <laughs> you know, and then boom, like that, reservation made, you know. Um, it's amazing to have giants like that who have your back. I understand uh, calling hold for a green card reference, but you don't call hold for a reservation at Carbone. Not midnight. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on, man. You must have been really hungry. Come on, man. And if I was hold, I would just recommend him a nice, you know. Chubby young lady from Brooklyn to marry. That'll get you a green card, right? Didn't people used to do that? Marry for green cards? A lot of people used to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They have to be chubby. Just people just did it. Well, remember the chubby woman that called last uh, week? Yeah. And how uh, willing she was to do things for her man, any and everything? You know, that was a big business back in the day. Like, you know, somebody... Why do you have to say big business? Because it was. Oh, okay. And somebody paid like a couple hundred grand, well, 50 grand for Mm -hmm. a green card. That was big business back in the day. Yeah. I thought you just married somebody, though. Oh, you pay the person that. to marry them. You got to pay them to marry him, but it's not. You just they don't do it anymore. Now you have to have history with them, so you, they they check your social media, your uh, Facebook. They want to see you together at parties, family functions. How far do you have to go back? They didn't want to make sure that you're not marrying a person just for the green, green card. card. Correct. I wonder how far you got to go back. I don't know. So you have to like, you know, you have to have a wedding. Like it yeah. can't just be like we married. Like it has to look romantic and special before they approve it. Yeah, they check up on that. Well, how long you got to go back? That's mm-hmm. interesting. Somebody, right. somebody call us. Somebody that's done it illegally lately. That just married somebody for a green card. Tell us how long you took. You can stay anonymous. All right. I just want to know. Now, we all know who uh, Eric Holder is. Eric Holder is the man that killed Nipsey Hussle. Now, when he was getting his time, 50 years to life in prison, uh, the judge gave him this warning. In prison, he's the target. There's a green light on him from all the gangs, all the people that love Nipsey Hussle. And so his life in prison is going to be hell. That's what I'm For as long as it lasts. All I hear is the judge Damn telling man. the truth. Drop on the clues bonds for the judge. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> it's prison, guys. It's not a resort. It's not a vacation. He's absolutely right, and he told him the truth. I don't see the problem. He said there's that. a green light on him for all of his gangs for as long as he serves his sentence. Yeah, people love Nipsey Hussle. Until then. Damn it, man. What's the problem? No. I don't want to spend... I, if I was in California, I wouldn't want to spend none of my taxpayer dollars uh, giving him protection in prison. He made his bed. He got a lie in it. Simple as that. He is definitely going to be in protective custody in jail. I don't. Not the way that judge sounded just now. Nah. Not the way that judge sounded. My point is, man, we all make choices. He That's made right. a choice. So he got to deal with the consequences of his actions, whatever they may be, for the next 50 years. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Short rumor report because we got front page news next. Tesla and Figaro will be joining us, and we got to talk about this mass shooting. All right. I hate talking about it. We'll take your calls after, man. And just, just, we just want to. We have to. Yeah, 800-585-1051. We just want to talk to you guys. How you feeling? What are your thoughts? What do you think? What should we do? Let's let's talk as a community. All right? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. 
Afro Nation, the world's biggest Afro Beats Festival, takes place in Miami at Lone Depot Park on May 27th and May 28th with Burna Boy, WizKid, and more. For more information, visit USA.AfroNation.com. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Uh, let's get in some front page news. We got Tez and Figaro on the line. Good morning, Tez. Good morning, Breakfast Club family. Let's start off with these uh, NBA players getting scammed out of $77 million. What the hell happened? Yeah, this is crazy. And actually, today, March 28th, in 1990, Jesse Owens received the Congressional Gold Medal today. So uh, he is another athlete uh, that we want to show some love to. I know you guys were talking earlier about your favorite teams. Um, but yeah, Morgan Stanley uh, advisors scammed three NBA players out of $77 million. Uh, financial advisor Daryl Cohen has been arrested and charged with allegedly defrauding current and former NBA players. The National Bank Basketball Association players are Drew Holiday, Chan Chandler Parsons, and Courtney Lee lost more than $7 million from an investment scam conducted by Cohen and his colleagues. Other athletes reported about $600 million in fraud-related losses from 2004 to 2019. Now, Cohen is facing three federal counts of fraud. If found guilty, he faces up to 20 years in prison. Cohen is also charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of wire fraud and each of those counts carry up to 20 years in prison so this is one of those unfortunate things you know we're always telling players invest your money do well with your money don't spend it all in a strip club and yet uh, these players did that and now uh, it has come back to hurt them they need a bailout the NBA got to treat them like the government treats the banks. Where's the payout? That's so sad. I <laughs> mean, because... So, so he wasn't working for Morgan Stanley when he was investing in money. He was doing independent? No, he was working for Mor Morgan Stanley. Oh, Morgan mm -hmm. Stanley should pay for that. Yeah. Absolutely positively. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they should pay for that. They, they need should... a bailout. Yeah, no, nah, they should pay for that. Now, yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lawsuit that'll, that'll come out of that. Now, let's talk about this this horrible shooting that that happened. And I know we broke it down a lot in an in, uh, hour before, in the 6 o'clock hour, but let's break it down again. So, so what happened? Yeah, here we are dealing with yet another uh, school tragedy, this time, in, uh, this time at the Covenant School, a private Christian elementary school in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, the story is still developing, but let's listen to the report to see what we know so far. There was a five-member team who was on the, that was on the second floor at that time. Two individuals from that five-member team opened fire on the shooter. We know at this point that this shooter is a female. Uh, she appears to be in her teens. We know that she was armed with at least two assault-type rifles and a handgun. She entered the school through a side entrance and traversed her way from the first floor to the second floor, firing multiple shots. We now know that there are three students who were fatally wounded. I saw people getting mad, Tez, because uh, folks are saying it was a transgender killer. But, but tell the people why that's important to the story. Yeah, and, and just to clarify on the report, uh, the report mentioned that it was possibly a teenager, and I just want to clarify that it was 28-year-old uh, Audrey Hale from Nashville who uh, allegedly attended that school at one point. And the reason why uh, they are bringing up, you know, transgender is because according to the manifesto, uh, which is, you know, kind of explains why she did what she did, uh, apparently there was some resentment uh, for having to attend uh, the Christian school. Now, uh, what personally, a coward. Jill... Mm -hmm. She's 10 years removed from that school, I think, or, or, or longer. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, she was no. 28, so yeah. At it's least. 10 years. Yeah, at least. Now, now, according to data from the Gun Violence Archive, a Monday shooting marks the 129th mass shooting in the U.S. so far in 2023. Now, First Lady Jill Biden was given a speech at the National League of Cities Congressional City Conference in Washington, D.C., and I want you guys to listen to the slow claps at the end of her remarks. Let's take a listen. We just learned about another shooting in Tennessee, a school shooting. And I am truly without words. And our children deserve better. And we stand, all of us, we stand with Nashville in prayer. Because people are tired of the thoughts and prayers. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. Prayers cha prayer changes things. But in situations like this, legislation changes things even more. You know? And, 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 and you know, I, I forgot to say this last hour. Mm -hmm. 
But I say this all the time when these situations happen. All you got to do is Google who are the senators who have benefited the most from NRA money, and you will see that NRA has spent a lot of money to benefit the political campaigns of senators who oppose gun safety legislation. These senators refuse to support common sense gun reform because the NRA is in their pockets. Absolutely. And, you know, again, just, you know, a lot of folks say, well, you know, we need, uh, you know, automatic weapons in case there's something that, you know, we need to, I guess, defend themselves. But let's just as a reminder, this is the 30 year anniversary of Waco. So I assure you that if you go against the government, you will lose. So let's let's not create, you know, an illusion uh, that somehow, you know, we can arm ourselves against the government. But I do believe uh, in 2A. I do believe in the right to protect yourself. But as a veteran, I do not believe uh, that that any civilian needs uh, wartime weapons. I'm qualified on the M60, the Law Rocket, the Grenade Launcher, the 9mm Glock, uh, and the M16. And not uh, any of those weapons is anything that I need, you know, on a day to day basis to protect myself except the 9mm. I wouldn't have bought that 9. I'm about yeah, to say that 9. I like the Nina. <laughs> But any of those other ones, it's not necessary, you know, right. to protect myself. So, uh, again, this is why the assault ban is always it always gets stopped in Congress is when it comes to these uh, assault uh, rifles. And you know what, Ted, you, uh, you've been a teacher as well. Mm -hmm. and, and you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you said, you know, if you were, you know, teaching, you'd still want to carry your firearm. Absolutely, I would. And I encourage, you know, my sister, she's been teaching for 25 years in Georgia. She's never had a weapon, never even uh, been trained on one. And she said that now she really wants to, you know, train. I, you know, I understand uh, Envy's earlier uh, hesitation with wondering, you know, if the teachers would be trained or, mm -hmm. you know, how they would use those weapons. And I, I agree with that. I understand that argument. But the government, obviously, like you mentioned, Charlemagne, is not doing anything, you know, to help us. Right. So I believe there should be armed guards at every single single door. Uh, the door should have been locked because that is a part of a protocol to make sure that every door is locked. So there was some error with that, as we've seen with many of these school shootings coming in from the side door. Um, so there, there's a lot of more training. You know, we can keep training all day long. The teachers were trained to keep the door locked and they didn't. So I understand the argument that, well, as long as they're trained, you know, they'll be fine. There's still mistakes that happen. But to your point, Charlemagne, how many teachers, you know, what is the likelihood that a teacher would shoot you know, a, a child versus the likelihood of these, you know, back to back mass shootings that we're seeing, you know, from the public. So and I think that's the fastest way to create change, because, you know, if these senators are going to continue to refuse to support common sense gun reform, if they're not going to put, you know, private armed security in the schools, if they're not going to put metal detectors in the schools in these states that are, are open carry states, allow the teachers to be able to bring their firearms to school and put a sign on the schoolyard, letting people know. There are teachers here that are armed. That's the quickest solution I can think of to try to slow some of this BS down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if a sign, you know, if, if the sign would stop somebody just like a stop sign doesn't stop somebody from running it. But I do know that nine millimeters stop you. That part I know. <laughs> no, absolutely. So I want you to have the nine and the sign. They, yeah, we I want the, the teachers too. to have the nine and I want the sign to be outside letting them know that the teachers are in here armed. So, you know, you better think twice. Right. Nine and sign, 2024. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. Make sure you uh follow Tez on mm -hmm. social media, man, at Tesla Figaro, uh, and subscribe to her podcast, the Scrape Shot No Chase Podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. All right. Well, thank you, Tez. Thank you. Let's open up the phone lines. Let's talk to the people. 800 You're about to have the same old conversation? Yeah, I know. 800-585-1051. But let's let people vent a little bit. Let's talk about it. How do you feel? What are your thoughts? I mean, a lot of a lot of you are taking your kids to school this morning. I know a lot of your kids got to go to school this morning. Call us up right now. I feel the same exact open. way I feel for, from the last time. Yeah, you and me both. But let's discuss. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. And that way, hopefully, we can stop it. But if there's nobody running the metal detectors, we need security. We need police officers in school. Train people with with. If they're not police officers, private them. security. Right. You know what I mean? Former 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 police officers who are no longer on the force. Correct. Have, you know, have these private security firms. You know, former uh, military veterans. Correct. You know what I mean? Who have gone into you know private security work. Like, trust me, there is so many private security mm -hmm. guards. I'm sure that would love to get contracts from these schools. Absolutely. And we got to talk about the gun laws. I mean, it's 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 to the point you should not be able to turn 18 and be able to buy a, a AR-15. Like that that is it, that is crazy. How many times are we going to say that? You though? shouldn't be able to be 21 and just be able to purchase a firearm and not 
not be able to take a test. I agree. You think about you. it for all these things. You know, if, if you want a car, you got to take a test. You got to be able to pass a test mm-hmm. to be able to get your license. A gun, you turn 21 and you could just purchase a, a firearm, you not know, knowing somebody's mental, not knowing if somebody's upset, mad, angry, pissed off. Not, not like, could you imagine who, who you are at 21? You're not able to to control your emotions, but you're, you're given the power of an AR-15. Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. Do you remember? Do you realize? That's crazy. Do you realize we could literally take any old talk break from any of these mass shootings yeah. and play them back right now and people would think it was new? <laughs> like, what like, you saying? Like, literally. And I'm going to say this again. Mm. We had this debate here on the radio. Mm. Teachers need to be armed. If you're in a state, if you're in an open carry state, if you're in a state where, you know, you're allowed to, you know, carry your firearm, if you're a teacher and you are licensed to carry and you know how to shoot, you should be allowed to bring your firearm yeah, to school. And I, I don't want to hear that I rhetoric about, saying. you know, teachers can go crazy too. Okay. Show me the statistics. I guarantee you it's been more people who've ran up in schools and killed students and teachers than it is teachers who have open fire on students. I, I, I don't mind that if it's proper training. And and that's my whole point because see now, you know, in a school, you're not just shooting somebody, you're shooting around kids, right? So now you might have kids running around as you're trying to shoot your target and if you don't know how to shoot, you can hit an innocent kid. That's my only point. I just want to make sure that whoever has that firearm is getting training. And if you do have a firearm, don't think just because you could you bought a gun, you know how to shoot. No. You need proper you training. Train. Absolutely. Just like when, when, when you drive a car. Nine times out of ten, most of you got training. Whether it was drive his ed, whatever it may be, you need this proper training. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? My name is Major. Major, good morning. Um, Talk to us, bro. Morning, Charlamagne. Morning, Taz. Morning, uh, DJ Envy. Um, Peace, King. I want to... Where's, where's the LGBT community about this? Like, listening to y'all this morning, I didn't even know that lady was 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 even part of that. But if y'all remember, if y'all remember when the baby was having his concert and, and after that whole ordeal, they wanted to cancel him. Where's LGBT right now on this topic? Where they at? How come they're not trying to take the podium to speak on this? To record, like... What's going on with this? I mean, it's the same reason I'm not going, you know, you know, speak up if a if a black man, you know, murders somebody this morning. Like, you know, one person doesn't represent a, a whole community, even though, you know, this society loves to do that. This society loves to use the face of one person to demonize a whole community. They've been doing that to black people forever, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, I don't even to be honest with you, I don't see what this person being trans has to do with this situation personally. I can care less what this person's gender is, what their sexuality is. He's a murderer that killed a bunch of kids. Or she's a murderer that killed a bunch of kids. That's the only, and, and I ref, and you're not going to get mad at me for uh, uh, not Ms. using Ms. the proper Ms. pronouns no, the person, for no goddamn the kid killer. Absolutely. All right? Melissa, good morning. Hey. Morning. Melissa, I got to ask you, where you from? Miami. You're not, a la- you're not uh, related to Allen, are you? God, I wish. I okay. like to call him my daddy sometimes. Oh, okay, because Melissa's last name is Iverson. So you I call was Allen cur- your cur- daddy? curious to uh, see if... Uh, and she calls him her daddy. You said you call him your daddy sometime? That's <laughs> a joke. It's a joke. It's How old are you, man? Oh, well, do we have to say that? About 30. Oh, that'll get you yeah, in the club. Yeah, that'll get you in the club. Alan Davis is my daddy. Yeah, he, Show him your he, ID. He I would have yeah. did that. Yeah. Now, what's your thoughts, mama? Well, I would like to say that uh, we need to start focusing on the mental health issue, the human issue, not the gun issue, because as long as these humans are out here and they're angry and they're hurting and we're ignoring them and calling people crazy instead of dealing with their human issues, we're going to have problems. Because this, this these people that are shooting, this isn't their first outburst in the world. Mm, you're right. And we need to deal with the human issue as well as the gun issue. I mean, and, and, but once again, we, we live in a country that Thank is not good at solving problems. So if we can't even focus on one problem, these complex issues, they, they we have no shot. Because this is a complex issue. She's right. right. It is a mental health issue. It is a gun, you know, a, a gun reform issue. It's all of these things. It right. is a school safety issue. It's all of these things. But, but you know what I was thinking like how do we say F the politicians and, and do something ourselves I just told y'all what to do is, is it us going to the schools and demanding and, and, and you know putting money together for the security like what, what can people do because obviously politics are playing a different game well, on, on, on a local level, you still got to get your, uh, you know, state elected officials to pass this kind of legislation. But, you know, I don't I guess on a on a just 
parental level. I, no, I, I guess you would have to. Uh, no, it all is, it's all politics. What am I talking about? What Can it be about? like a neighborhood no, no, no. watch where, like, no, no, no. you know, it's, it's all one, politics. Monday, Tuesday, this dad do it. No. Wednesday, Thursday, this dad. You know what I mean? It's, it's I all don't know. politics. Whether you want metal detectors in the schools, whether you want armed security in the schools, it's all going to go through politics. Whether you want teachers to carry firearms, it's all politics. That's why Nina Turner always says, you can sit here and talk about you don't do politics. If you don't do politics, politics will eventually do you. It's Eight, all politics. 800-585-1051. We're taking your calls. Uh, we're talking about this deadly mass shooting that happened in Tennessee yesterday. Call us up right now. Let's have a conversation, man. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it, man. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. That Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're taking your calls on this mass shooting that took place yesterday in Tennessee at the Covenant School, a private Christian elementary school in Nashville. Three children died, two adults, and they killed the shooter. The shooter Horrible. was 28 years old, uh, went to the school. Uh, was trans and they're just trying to figure out why so we're just taking your call so many people are on the phone lines right now hello who's this hey Shonda how you doing hey good morning hey, talk Shonda. to us good morning. I'm Shonda hey Shonda hey how you doing good morning my name is Sharla Maine yo shut up man go shut thoughts mama everybody know your voice oh I guess that's a thank you that, that is a thank you thank you <laughs> my thing is in the school shoot 25 years ago I was in school we didn't have these problems. it's something that they're doing that they were doing back then that they're not doing now to make all these gaps you know how let's say you make, you're making some bread and it gets air bubbles the air bubbles are coming from somewhere these mm. problems in these schools are coming from somewhere you got to start at the root of the problem if this wasn't going on 25 years ago, in, in this sense, why is it going on now? The government is lacking somewhere. So rules have lacked somewhere. All right. So I laws think. have lacked somewhere. Yeah, I think... There's, I think. No reason. There's something going on to you. Johnson to the school. I, I think what you're describing is deregulation. You know, when you when you have deregulation in an industry, and there's definitely been, you know, uh, deregulation in, in regards to, you know, uh, gun gun reform. Yeah, you know, I, like it's like we talked about. We talked about how easy it is to go purchase a weapon. I think that, on top of you know, uh, lack of resources given to mental health initiatives, you know. And, and, and just lack of school safety overall. I think that, and I, I think also it's a lot of, of, of copycats, right? And when I say copycats, I see other people see this happening and then decide this is what they want to do, right? Uh, like you said, 25 years ago, we didn't see too many mass shootings. We didn't see any at all. But then, then I'm thinking about it like this, right? Think about, think about it like this. Before 9-11, right? You can walk on a plane without going through security. You could actually walk to the gate. Your mother could walk you to the gate. You could walk your girlfriend to the gate. You could walk your wife to the gate. Mm -hmm. And something happened that changed drastically where it's, it's so much it's so much protection, right? You got to go through metal detectors. There's so much police. Things evolve and things change. And, and I think with the schools, we have to do the same thing. I mean, we've seen too many shootings. And we've seen too many problems. They, things they, have to evolve and change. And we need security. We need police. We need... We need to protect our kids. I, I agree, and they, but there definitely was school shootings twenty five years ago. I mean, there was school shootings before there was nine uh, eleven. You, Columbine mm. was like ninety nine, but we didn't see it as much. I mean, we shouldn't have to after Columbine. That's when things should have changed. They're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I think I think it's uh, I think it's the UK. The UK had one. Let me look that up real quick before mm -hmm. I put that out there. Why are you looking that up? I'll go to another caller. Mm -hmm. Hello, who's this? How you doing? This is Mo from Florida. Mo from Florida. What's up, brother? Talk to us. How's it going, brothers? Hey, up, like say, thank y'all for everything y'all do. <clears throat> thank you, brother. Y'all literally get my morning going. Thank you, Mo. This morning started a little different, man. You know, we got this tragedy talking about, and I'm I'm sick of talking about it. But I, I got a, you know, I just got a little topic. I, I read an article a while ago and talked about how many um, unemployed veterans we have on stateside right now. Veterans who have been trained already by the military. That's right. And there's over six hundred fifty thousand unemployed veterans. Right. There's a, there's about 130 to 150 thousand schools, public and private together. The number is there. All we even if you vet half these veterans, you say okay, half of them can come back and do this task. You're still doubling the personnel at each school. You're right. 
You're giving them a job. How many of our veterans are struggling to get a job when they come back? How many of them are, are, are yearning for a place to still protect and serve? You're right. What better than a school? These are people who already signed up to give their life for strangers, even overseas. That's These right. are people who are trained, who we paid already. We've invested in to train them. That's yeah. right. But yet, we just sit there and let them continue to be unemployed and our schools unprotected. Only, only thing you got to do for right. those people is uh, make sure they have Thanks, proper mom. mental health checks. And put them to work. And it's Britain. In Britain, it took just one school shooting to pass major gun control. Uh, 26 years ago, in Scotland, a gunman entered a primary school, killed 16 students, a teacher, injured 15 other people. And the following year, Parliament banned private ownership of most handguns, as well as semiotic weapons, and required mandatory registration for shotgun owners. And there have been no school shootings in the UK since then. So all it takes is one. That's right. After Columbine, if they wanted to, they could have shut all of this down. But like I keep telling y'all, just Google the senators who have benefited the most from NRA money, and you will see the NRA has spent a lot of money to benefit the political campaigns of these senators who oppose gun safety legislation. And, and you know what bothers me too much when they talk about the money, right, and, and how much money it will cost? But then you got to think about how much money we give to all these other nations, right? Think about all the money we didn't we didn't gave to Ukraine and the in the in the in the tanks and the ammunition and, and giving the money to Ukraine dollars. to defend themselves. Right. Give the money to our public schools so they can properly defend, defend themselves. ourselves. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Yo, it's really crazy. just that simple. 800 585 1051 We'll take some more calls when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Uh, we're taking your calls. We're talking about this mass shooting. We just wanted you guys to vent a little bit. So if you don't know, of course, there was a mass shooting in Nashville, Tennessee yesterday at the uh, Covenant School, private Christian school. Three children died, two adults, and the shooter was killed. 28-year-old uh, went to the school. Uh, they're trying to figure out why What the motive was They're still searching for a motive uh, The shooter was trans So we're taking your calls And just just, just trying to just get you to vent a little bit I know that this is on your mind I know a lot of you are taking your kids to school So you feel like I do anxiety uh, Double checking and triple checking the cameras today If you got them Hello, who's this? Hey yo, this is B-Mom from the Metro How y'all doing? 803, what's happening? We Talk back in us. the final four, baby Lady Gamecocks Yes, Don Staley is amazing. Very proud of her and Lady Gangcock. You already know the Louis Vuitton Don. She was dripped out last night, wasn't she? Yes, she, yeah, was. she was, as always. But, yeah. you know, the issue, like, on the school thing for me is, like, you have to have the armed guards, but <clears throat> it's going to have to be for people to get a coalition. Like, people are going to have to come together. Like, so they got Jill Biden up there talking and stuff like that. And it's like, I feel for her in an instance because it's like, this ain't even on the government no more or anybody associated with the government. So she can get that kind of applause and stuff like that or that pro clap, but it shouldn't even be on her. This is up to the people. Like I'm looking at the Richland County, or Richland County taxes right now for schools this year because I had to pay my uh, my vehicle tax and it's 57.6% for schools. And that money historically, especially in South Carolina for schools and for education goes underutilized. That's right. Because you know, South Carolina schools are trash. We know this. You know what I mean? The corridor of shame yeah. is a real thing. We know this. Yeah, so like when you look at all that stuff, this ain't on the government no more. This is on the people. I agree with you when you say it's on the people, but it's not. It's definitely still on the government. Because when you have senators that are refusing to support common sense gun reform because the NRA is in their pockets, that's a problem. Hey, good morning. Good morning. What's your thought, Mama? Um. Well, so I definitely agree that there needs to be some gun reform. Everyone always talks about that. But I just don't know about having guns in a school because, I mean, kids are accessing them at home, too. So that would just be another option or another, like, incident of a child getting their teacher's gun or, you know, it going off accidentally. So that would be my only concern about But why, why do we act like teachers can't be responsible for their own firearms? Like, why do we act like the teacher's going to have mean, the gun just sitting on their desk? I mean, you're right. But, like, wasn't the door left unlocked for, isn't that something you also mentioned? People not even locking doors and that's part of protocol. So. I agree. Yeah, but we just got to follow the protocol. Maybe maybe having, a, you know, a fingerprint access to a safe or a door or whatever it may be. Because, you know, when you do get a, a firearm, if you have, if you go to purchase a firearm, depending on what state you are, they take you through those classes mm -hmm. and those scenarios. And a lot of times you have to make sure you, con you know, continue with those classes. I know in New Jersey, uh, for a concealed firearm, you have to, every 
three, I think it's two years, you have to go back and take a class and, and be up on what, or what it is so that you can keep that firearm, you know? And by the way, it's not just schools, even though we're talking about schools right now. I go to my daughter's cheerleading competitions, man, and I, I told you this last time, maybe. I was in Atlanta. I think we was at the, the is it the Georgia Convention Center? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the Georgia, they yeah. were telling me how when there's a black event there, like your car show, how all the doors are locked yep. and you can't go in through side doors. That's and they make y'all pay for extra security that's true. because they don't know what could happen. At these cheerleading competitions, people are just walking in anywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going through any doors. My, the, the security that I'm with, because I'm always got security when I'm when I'm out with these, you know, at these events. And they're they're looking around like this is dangerous. This is unsafe. They're, this is like, yo, this is dangerous. It's like somebody could just come in here and start spraying. And and so their right. mind automatically goes to uh, what that looks like for people who are walking around with, you know, uh, guns. Yeah. And, and and you're in Georgia. So that's a place where, it's, oh, you know, I don't you think can you, can in, you can't go into any facility with it. But you know you what I mean? Know, Georgia, you can't. Texas, you can't. Yeah. Texas, you, you can walk in a facility with a gun and you can't deny somebody from walking in with, with a gun. But, you know, to your point... Which is crazy when a lot of these businesses and places look at us and look at us as black people. Mm -hmm. They charge us more and make us do more. When I have to do these car shows, I have to pay way more for security than your daughter's cheerleading, than my daughter's dance. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's not right. I've never had a problem, knock on wood, or any of my events. We have the, the proper security. We have armed security. We have police officers. But I do it to make people feel safe. But, you know, we have to do these things for these events. Is that why that, you say you're a white Dominican? Or like you say, you tell them you're a lap dog for a rich white person. Is that why you? Say no, I'm black, things? sir. I'm I'm black. I don't know what you're talking about. Today, I'm, I'm black. Yesterday, you was a lap dog for a rich white. No, person. I wasn't. I was black. Day before that, you were Dominican. You was a fish. That was no. I was not a fish. He was a I fish. said I would like to be. Yesterday, one for, you, just said for a day. Well, you, Yesterday we, you said you would be a fish. Yesterday you said you were playing make believe. We were playing make believe. Okay, well, we I was playing make believe. Yesterday I was a, a, no, a dog, no, a lap dog. No, yes, I was. No, we played. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. They gave you a discount. Right? Discount, uh huh. If they gave you a discount on these buildings, if you identified as a lap dog for a rich white person, would you do it? How long I got to do it for? <laughs> What's the moral the, of the story, the man? The duration of the event. The moral of the story is, bark. as long as there are senators who benefit from NRA money, you will never see common sense gun reform passed in this country. And, you know, I'm at the point right now where the only bright idea I have is, yes, in these states where, you know, people are legally able to carry guns, let the teachers carry their own firearms, yo. I'm out of bright ideas because nobody else is coming to save us. So at this point, we just got to save ourselves and our children. All right. Well, when we come back, we got your rumor report. Uh, people are mad at Logic. You remember Logic? Signed to Def Jam. He's a black and white artist. Well, we're going to talk about him when we come back. People are mad at him. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. All right. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Logic. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. All right, well, let's talk Logic. You know who Logic is. Of course, he's a rapper. He signed the Def Jam. Uh, him and Charlemagne went back and forth at one time. He doesn't like Charlemagne. I think he likes Charlemagne now, right? Y'all cool now? Or you don't know? I don't care. I don't know. Uh, well, he's trending again, and this is because he was with his dad, and this is what he said when he was with his dad. Hey, Daddy, what you got to say to the world? Hey, what's going on? It's time to go night-night. If you, if you had advice for anybody out there, what would it be, Dad? Keep it real. Keep it real all the time, nigga. You already know what it is. <laughs> But keeping it real goes wrong, and you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. <laughs> Say what? The f that's that Chappelle. That's what they mad at him for? I didn't hear anything. He said the N word. He's half black. Right, but people are saying that he shouldn't be saying the N-word. I guess he identifies. Oh, I don't know. I don't listen if, to if you're, not mad, if you're not mad at Drake, Drake is biracial. He says the N-word. J. Cole is biracial. He says the N-word. Logic is biracial. He says the N-word. The reality is all of them should only be saying nig. They should only if you're biracial. Up, you know what I'm man. saying if you're if you're only half black, you should only be saying nigga. You shouldn't be saying the word at all. I'm trying not to say it anymore at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm 100 percent black, 97 percent West African, by the way. But if you're going to say it as a biracial, you should only say half of it. Okay. Well, people are upset about that, and they said that uh, no black uh, son calls his father daddy. They say dad, not daddy. That is not true. Little Wayne, think... little Wayne called Birdman daddy for years. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not true. Like, what you, what I'm just telling you what was what was trending, what people are upset about. No black man called these. Who, huh? I, I never mean, heard I, that. I don't call my father daddy. I call daddy, him daddy. Daddy. Dad. Dad. What's up, daddy? What's up, pops? Pops, pops I never dad. thought about it. I never say daddy. I got to think about it next time I talk to my dad. Dad. I guess I say dad. Dad. I don't say daddy. Daddy. What's wrong with daddy? Man, y'all make Red, me sick. you call your dad daddy? What do you call your daddy? Poppy. <laughs> Poppy. 
I call my daddy if I knew him. Somebody's out there thinking up, that man. right now. Shut up, man. Shut up, man. Shut up. Somebody out there driving thinking that right now. <laughs> I call my daddy if I knew him. Now, uh, Candy Burris calls uh, Latosha Scott. Latosha Scott. I know is, that's not her name. Latasha? Latosha? I'm pretty sure it's Latasha. Latosha. I know they know Latosha. It's L A T O C H A. I don't know no Latosha. <laughs> it's L A T O C H A. I ain't never heard. Who knows a Latosha? I don't know. Latosha sounds like a candy, Bro, like a right. birthman or something. Well, she was in the, you know she was in a member of Escape, and Latosha or Latasha made fun of her for not being able to sing. Let's hear it. This is the part that is like really corn, corny of her to me. You are trying to clown a person's voice whose voice is leading on half the hits that is your claim to fame. Me and you are in a group together. Let's be clear. I've already had a number one billboard gospel single. Something that right now is what you are trying to do. But it's like you is trying to join on the bandwagon of other people and clowning your group member that goes on stage with you and make money with you. Well, how did how they do that at? You clowning me, you clowning yourself. I'm so confused by all of this. Don't they have a reality show together? They're in the same group. <laughs> they perform with Are each they other. On, I haven't seen the show. Are they on the show together? I don't I haven't seen the show. Uh -huh. But they on the escape. Well, this is where it started. Listen, I ain't never had no problem with her singing lead. Go ahead, girl. That the blow to my chest would come directly from you. He'll come. He'll come. What's happening, yo? What's going on here? Listen. <laughs> Hell no. So that's where it started from. I'm so confused because that sounded alright to me. I'm not a singer. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she. It was, it, it was it pitchy in places. It wasn't Stephanie Mills. It, it wasn't, wasn't Patti LaBelle. It, was it wasn't it was Anita pitchy. Baker. But it, it sounded alright to me. It was pitchy in I'm places. But, but Latasha or Latosha was uh, laughing at it. And that's our group member. Like, I don't understand. And Candy responded, don't be laughing at me. We're in the same group. We made this money together. What's the point of. She's right. You know. Going at me, we in the same group. If they're not beefing, if they're still doing shows together, if they're still doing the TV show together, I don't get the issue. All of this is just for the oh, uh, it reality is, it show. is Latasha. This it, it is. I know you didn't have to tell me, but it's, it's, it's L A T O C H A. <laughs> you saying that for yourself? Yeah. I, I knew it wasn't no Latosha. Latosha sounds like the new Altoid. <laughs> okay, my point is, um, I think this is all promotion just for the reality show. To attack Candy? Seems like everybody's I, yeah, attacking I Candy. I think they're stirring up waters to catch fish. Mm. The show comes on every week, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't watch the show. Do you? Uh, no, I, don't, I haven't watched it Me yet. neither. Not saying I don't want to. I would definitely watch it. That's the escape show. Mm -hmm. Now, Rihanna's driving. Uh, Rihanna's driver's car was stolen the other day. Uh, it's a $37,000 Audi sedan. The driver uh, went to Rihanna's house, ran up in the crib to grab something right fast, and when came back out, the car was gone. Now, the driver is in search for that $37,000 2012 Audi sedan, which he reportedly left running to make a quick run inside the crib. You asked Rihanna's driver? Yes. Rihanna ain't riding around in no sedan. I didn't say it was Rihanna's car. I said it was Rihanna's driver. Rihanna's driver might have, you know, you got to drive to work mm. before you drive the oh, Maybach yeah, or the Rolls Royce. It's or not a story if it's not Rihanna's driver. Correct. Got you. All That's right. not a story either, by the way. It is If a it story. was Rihanna's driver and they stole one of Rihanna's cars, it's a story. Yeah. I could get, no, God bless that man. But you know, that's not really a story. It's just not. It is. It's not Rihanna's really. driver. He wasn't driving one of Rihanna's cars. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, what are you giving your donkey to, man? I hate you, man. He just wasn't. Uh, four after the hour is a double donkey, okay? Uh, it's going to Keith Chastain and the Clovis Police Department. We're going to have a quick lesson this morning, kids, on why it takes two. Okay. It All takes right. two. All right. Always remember that. Two. All right, and then when we, uh, after that, we're going to open up the phone lines. A situation happened with me, and I want to discuss it on air. Do you mind? I'm just sitting here, bro. All right. I'm hey. with you. Okay? All right. I'm riding with you. All right, donkey. It depends, though, unless it's something stupid. If it's stupid, I'm jumping out the car. Doe, drop me off. <laughs> no, you staying in the car. Right, Doe. No, you staying Let in. Let me out. No. no. Nope. Don't get a day's up next. is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Check out the new movie, Spinning Gold. The true story behind Casablanca Records, the most successful independent record label ever that gave us artists like Gladys Knight, Bill Withers, and Kiss. It's the greatest story never told with an unbelievable soundtrack. See it in theaters, Spinning Gold, March 31st. I was donkey up the day. Yeah, made it. Damn, the hee-haw again. <laughs> it's time for donkey of the day. <laughs>
I mean, ain't trying to be donkey today no more. They should be embarrassed by what they already did. I I'm not making these people do these things. They called donkey of the day, and it really caught me off guard. Damn, Charlemagne, who got the donkey of the day today? Well, Jess Hilarious, uh, donkey of the day for Tuesday, March 28th is a double donkey. It goes to 38-year-old Keith Chastain and the Clovis Police Department. Uh, it comes a point in time in life where we all must remember it takes two. Okay, two. All right, kids gather around. Your Uncle Charlotte would like to tell you about some things that have been going on since the 1900s. Okay, one of those things is the saying, it takes two. Okay, or it takes two you to tango that means that a situation or argument involves two people and they are both therefore responsible for it i repeat it takes two to tango means that a situation or argument involves two people and they are both therefore responsible for it it takes two is also a classic hip-hop record that will make anyone with a soul who grew up in the 1900s and 80s lose their mind Okay, uh, the reason I am giving you this history lesson today is because in this donkey that I'm delivering, it absolutely took to you. All right. See, Keith was arrested 10 times in one month. I repeat, Keith Chastain was arrested 10 times in one month. See, y'all think I'd be lying. Let's go to Fox 26 News for the report, please. Local law enforcement agencies say they are very familiar with 38 year old Keith Chastain, who has been booked in Fresno County Jail not once. Not twice, but 10 times in the last 31 days. Lord have mercy. Chastain is from Fresno and is currently facing 18 felonies and 15 misdemeanors from his recent arrests, according to Clovis Police Department. His charges include stealing six vehicles, a DUI, vandalism, fraud, possession of controlled substance, and more. Clovis Police Department alone says it has arrested Chastain six times in the last month. Around 9.30 Tuesday morning, Clovis police received a call about a stolen truck that Chastain was suspected of driving. Police say an officer found the stolen truck driving in Old Town Clovis and followed it until more officers arrived. Officers pulled Chastain over in front of Clovis Police Department and arrested him without incident. Police say he was the only person in the stolen truck and happened to be on his way to pick up his personal property from Clovis Police Department from the last time he was arrested. Mm. Mind you, he was in a stolen vehicle. Mm. <laughs> now, uh, as you just heard, uh, Keith Chastain was arrested 10 times by Clovis police, six times, okay? Six times by Clovis police and four times by other agencies. He was in a stolen vehicle on the way to pick up his items from the jail, mm -mm -mm. okay? Now, if he had gotten locked up by different agencies once or twice, I would understand. But if you get locked up by the same agency, the Clovis Police Department, six times, six times, at what point does it become the police department's fault as well for constantly letting you out? At what point does it become a judge's fault for constantly granting you bail? He's facing 18 felonies and 15 misdemeanors with charges including stealing six vehicles, DUI, vandalism, fraud, possession of a controlled substance, and a whole lot more. At some point, maybe after arrest number three, possibly after arrest number five, uh, surely at arrest number six, someone at the Clovis Police Department has to say, no need to let this man out because he's just gonna come right back. Okay, if the Clovis Police Department had a customer loyalty program like Starbucks or Subway or Sephora, this man, Keith, would get his temp arrest for free. Okay, get arrested nine times, get your temp arrest for free. Clearly, this man has a boyfriend behind those walls. Either that or he likes the food. Okay, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And this man, Keith, has shown us he's a serial criminal. Okay, so give him what he wants. And what he wants is clearly zero bond. Ten arrests in 31 days. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So yes, Keith is insane because he keeps committing crimes and the same crimes and getting locked up. And the Clovis Police Department is insane because they keep locking Keith up for these crimes, the same crimes and letting him out. They both are to blame. So please give Keith Chastain a he and give the Clovis Police Department a ha together because it takes two to give them the biggest hee haw. <laughs> This man wrote his name in jail, yo. That's mm -mm. why they say don't write your name. They say don't write your name on the walls in jail. You, you keep coming back to that jail. Jesus. All right. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for that donkey today. Yes, indeed. Now, what uh, happened to you, man? Let me let me tell you first about this woman, right? 
This woman was whoa, on a United whoa. Airlines I've been flight. With you before. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Shut up, man. Woo! A woman was Woo! on a United <laughs> Airlines flight flying fr- flying from Tokyo to Seattle to visit her husband. She had her AirPods on the plane. When she got off the plane, she forgot it. So she was right, waiting right at the, you know, at the at the bridge to to get her AirPods and one of the flight attendants says she'll bring the AirPods out. They didn't bring the AirPods out. They brought her jacket out. And they said the AirPods weren't on the plane. She tracked her AirPods and found it at an airport employee's home. Was it the same employee? Uh, they didn't say it was. A, if, if it was, it wasn't the same employee. Okay. But they did. Well, right? What happened? So now let me tell you what happened to me on Friday. Friday, I'm coming back from Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. I have my backpack, my roller, and I have a suit jacket. Or blazer, I should say. Because mm-hmm. I was taping out in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if you travel with a blazer, you can't put it in your luggage. You have to. You want. You need to hang it, right? Mm-hmm. So the lady... You if know, they have space. If they have space. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm flying first class. I'm Delta. I'm a million miler. So mm-hmm. they, they usually hang it for me. Not a problem. Are you platinum? Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm actually diamond. Oh, wow. um, so when I get on the flight to check in, the lady, white woman, tells me, no, I can't check. I can't check it. So I tell the lady, I said, hey, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to put my blazer in my luggage? It's one blazer. I could hang it. I'm in first class. They usually allow me. No, well, you're not getting on my plane. I said, okay. I said, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. I said, I'm going to go check my roller. So as I go to check my roller, uh, I remember my jewelry is in my roller. So I said, you know what? I don't want to check my roller with my jewelry on it. Let me take it out and put it in my backpack so I can walk on a plane. Mm-hmm. I put it on the ledge. I talk to the lady. The lady tells me, Envy, don't worry. Black lady, don't worry. We got you. I'm just going to print out this tag. We're going to walk you on. Don't worry. She's bugging. I mm-hmm. said, all right, cool. So she was like, but come on, hurry up. So I grab it and we walk on the plane. Come back to New York. I land. I got to shoot a video. I go in my bag, look for my jewelry. I don't have my jewelry. White lady got you. I left the jewelry on the counter in the lamp. Damn, damn, damn. I'm, what's it got to do with the AirPods store? Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay. So now the jewelry is left on the, on the counter. Um, just to tell you what kind of jewelry is, I don't know if you've seen for my, for Christmas. We my, don't care what kind I'm of jewelry you, it was. Just tell us. We know I'm it was expensive. No, not even that. My wife and kids gave me jewelry for Christmas with their names oh, on it. Oh, that? Yeah, so wow. all, all the jewelry okay, with names so then, on it with okay, the Brooklyn, okay. all, all the names all right. on it, right? Just when I start, I see now you're making me care. Okay. So now, so my stuff with all the names on it is there. So it means something to you. It means something to me. This so when, is getting good. So when I, so when I land. I can see the pain. Now I'm interested. Yeah, I was, I was effed up this whole okay. weekend. So when I land, I call them and they tell me that they can't do anything because it's five o'clock and Lost and Found is closed at five o'clock. It's not open on the weekends and I can't call until Monday. So now I've been sitting with this until Monday, which was yesterday, so I can call. So now they try to use the cameras. Cameras weren't working. They can't find anything. I know how to. I know how to track the jury down. But continue. Oh, you said what? I know how to track this jury down. But how? tell me how. Because now nobody can find my jewelry, all your and kids, the jewelry's worth about eight Honda Accords. And, your, and I can't. I can't go. And, all and I'm kids, sick right now. All your kids are named after cities. So Syracuse is in Syracuse. Oh boy. Uh, London is in London. Who else you got? Brooklyn is might be in Brooklyn. Oh my goodness. That's what happened. You left the gift there at the airport. I did not leave a gift so there. So somebody saw this and was like, "Oh, they clearly want me to give this jewelry to people to to place to the places that they're going." So that's long, what it sounds like to me. Long story short, I am praying and I'm hoping nope. that one of those airport employees Mm-mm. found that bag nah. and said, you know what? I want to do something good because I need some good karma. Nope. And return. Nope. The pieces of jewelry Mm-mm. with all my kids names on it. Nah. My real Cuban link. Mm-mm. That's bust down with all that's the diamonds on it. My real jury. I don't told you about that. My real bust down Rolex. Holy, you left all of that. And my Cartier pinky ring. <laughs> man, drop all the clues, bomb. Don't whoever you, don't came you, up, man. God damn, don't stop, stop that damn bomb. Man, stop that bomb. Who came up? Somebody came up, man. God is so good. To this God is good. You can look at it two ways. You can look at no, it like you lost something. Or lost you can it. look at it like you gave it. No. You gave it. You gave it to, to, to the streets. I'm looking at it like That's I charity. lost it. I lost. There's no charity. Can I ask you a question though? Yes, sir. What the hell has got to do with the AirPods? Why did you start off with the AirPods story? Because I'm I'm seeing that this person this person stole it and left lost their iPod. So I want to open up the phone lines and ask anybody what they lost. You at do the realize airport. that you can track iPods, right? I know I can't track that. That has nothing to do with it. That was just my segue into talking <laughs> about the, the stuff hell? that I lost in the airport. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. See, that's why I don't care. I can't until you told. If you had to tell the iPod story, I'd care. No, you wouldn't. Have. No, I wouldn't. I know. 
Let's open up the I phone I kind of like seeing the pain in your voice a little Let's open up the phone line. No, it's not funny. 800-585-1051. I'm just asking. What it's have, not funny, have, but it's funny. Have you lost anything that big? Have you lost anything big that it hurts your heart? <laughs> What's was funny? I almost cried this weekend. You know when you go in your bag and you open up and you know that jewelry's oh, there and you know man. it's not there? Man. I didn't want to tell anybody because it just felt, it hurt. Mm, mm, I'm mm, hurt mm. now. All right, but 800 585 I don't know how many people are going to relate to you, bro. No, it, it doesn't have to be as big as that. But <laughs> something that you lost. It's not funny. Wait, what's so funny? Man, you should call your rapper friends and vent to them because we don't care. <laughs> if you lost something that was personal to you. Now you're talking. That's different. How did it make you feel? 800 <laughs> 585 I lost my bust down pinky ring, okay, and my Rolex chain. All right. Rolex watch. How much? Tell, tell us how much it was worth. You might as well tell us now. Come on, tell us. Just t- say the number. Quarter. Quarter million? Yep. All right. Drop on the clues box, whoever came up. Yeah, don't you do it. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, I'm man. telling you. It's not funny. What's crazy is you really named your kids after cities. They can sell that stuff in these cities, Yo, man. shut up, man. There's a guy in Syracuse with a Syracuse chain right now. I don't have any kids named Syracuse. What's the, what is it? Madison. Brooklyn, Logan, Jackson, Mississippi, Peyton, okay, and London. Yeah, three of them is towns. And Jackson, Mississippi. Goodbye, man. It's the Breakfast Club. Come on, the Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, NV lost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in jewelry at the airport. Yes. I don't even know how that happens. Because when I have anything that's valuable on me, which is very rare, because you know I, that's just not how I move, um, it's on me. Meaning I ain't putting it in no bag. I ain't letting it out my sight. It's on me. You know what? In it, my pocket. You know like, what's funny? That's 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 my wife. My wife will not take her jewelry out, but I do because. I don't. I gotta take it off to go through the metal detectors, and it's too much, and it's always a problem. So mm. I just leave it in the bag, and I keep it on me, and it's never a problem. And and uh, they got me. So if you don't know the story, I was traveling from Atlanta back to New York on Friday. Uh, I had my roller, my backpack, and I had my blazer. You know, because I was just shooting. Now you all know, men, you can't put your blazer in your your luggage because it's gonna be all folded. Usually, I'm a Delta Million Miler. I'm, I'm diamond. They don't give me a problem. They just hang my jacket up for me. This white woman was not trying to hear it. She was nasty. I don't know if she had a bad day, but she told me I couldn't do it. So I said, okay, I had to check my bag. When I went to check my bag, I um, remember my jewelry was in there. I was like, you know what? Let me take it out and put it in my backpack. When I went on the plane, I left the jewelry. I've been trying to get video footage of what happened, where it went, who would have had it, the the cleaning crew's number. And Delta is not necessarily being the easiest when trying to find this information. So if you work for Delta, you know anybody for Delta, please holler at me. Somebody came up. Uh, I have three thoughts. Um, <clears throat> you, you got insurance. I, I, I do. But you know, so the, it's your kid's name, so you got them custom made. So I know that means yeah, they're, a lot they're, they're custom made for my kids, and they're, like I said, their family. And some of that stuff I, I won't be able to get again, which is the messed up thing. But that's my jewelry. I mean, it, it is what it is. And my kids got their names for me for Christmas, so it's all my kids and my wife's name on the chains, which is which is I love wearing it because it represents my family. And maybe um, it, I think you know insurance, and I think you know that might be God's way of saying you don't need the jewelry no more. You know what I'm um, saying? I like, was thinking about that. I was thinking about maybe I was gonna have it on and somebody was gonna rob me and shoot that's me. That's what for I'm it. saying. That's the way I was looking at it. But like that Rolex was my first watch I ever purchased. So like mm-hmm. some of these things are f the price. It's but it, it depreciated with value because you made it a bust down. But it's mine. I it's my bust saying. down. It's, I, it's something that I bought. <laughs> it's my bust it, it down. is. But I bought it at a time where it's still worth more than these watches now because the prices went up and it's still. I got it at a point. I got it like 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. My first Rolex. You know yeah. what I mean? My so third. My third thought. Means, is, go ahead. What you say? Look what? That, your third what? No, my third thought is just simply this. Suck my d- Y'all d- ain't gonna never make it out the hood. See? Y'all d- gonna die, bro. See? <laughs> See? You'll be okay, man. See? I do. I, all jokes aside, though, I believe this is God's way of saying you don't need the jewelry no more. Because you're gonna get the money back because you got insurance. Even though your insurance about to go up crazy. See? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jesus. the other part you're not want. You don't. You know what I mean? But. You don't need the jury no more, man. Ray, good morning. Good morning. Ray, did you lose something sentimental to you? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I, I feel your pain. Uh, 
I, I was married, and uh, unfortunately, I lost my wife about 10 years ago. Oh, man. And, Sorry uh, to hear that, bro. I was definitely appreciated, bro. I was um, at a, a baby shower, actually. Uh, my niece baby shower and um, a little altercation uh, happened to break out or whatever and I just wanted to make sure all my people were secure and everything so and I, I actually did was on my, on my on my on my rocker I took everything out I started to disregard all my jewelry and everything take everything off and I could have sworn everything was secure but as, I, as I'm you know looking at everything after everything calmed down I noticed I used to have a foxtail chain you know, chain is not that expensive, but uh, that's not even the, the issue. I had my wife's ring. I used to wear them around it. Uh, her engagement ring and her wedding ring. Oh, man. So, Damn, bro. Yeah, I noticed that, that that was gone. I didn't care about anything else. Nothing, nothing else. But I, I had everything else but that. But, you know, and it, I haven't recovered. That's about three years ago, and I, I still hurt over that. So, still, still I, when you right? say that you, you know, you had your kids' names and don't that stuff I, I know I, I can feel your pain man I can feel it I, I feel your pain my brother you lost your wife 10 years ago and you lost you know uh, a, a symbol a of symbol? y'all love yeah. so I, I, I totally understand that my brother Thank Lord you, have brother. mercy yeah sorry to, I'm sorry that you're going through that Envy have you tried to give a reward have Not you tried yet. that we're on the air not yet um, but you, I'm you hoping, want you think somebody's just going to do the right thing out of the goodness of their heart you know I'm, I'm hoping that works? people would do the right thing but if not I mean if somebody has it I, I will definitely give a reward and I, I'm hoping that they hit me in the DM that's what I've been waiting for that's why I said on the radio today because you know maybe somebody found it didn't know it was mine didn't know why that. would they know all these cities <laughs> is your <laughs> kids names didn't know you know Madison Logan you know London Jackson Brooklyn and Peyton are my kids these you know, are kids Gia, bro these you know? are kids and quarterbacks you name just kids after kids and quarterbacks. Hello, who's this? In streets. <laughs> hey, it's Joe. How y'all doing? Hey, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Joe, what you lost, Joe? Man, an irreplaceable painting that I had been begging my father for for years, okay? And I flew to Haiti, and he finally let me take the painting. And I get back to JFK, and I think I forgot it in the bathroom. So I know my painting is hanging in one of them airport employee houses. Damn it, man. I'm sorry. Yes. How do you leave a it whole so painting cool. in the bathroom, yo? No, it, it, you know what? I'm not used to carrying. I normally, like, put everything in my bag. So I had the painting rolled up, and it was so large, I couldn't put it in any bag. So I was carrying it in my hand, and I went and used the restroom after I got off the flight. I don't really like the, air, the airplane bathroom. So I went to use the restroom and I totally forgot it in the bathroom. But you know what, Envy? Yes, ma'am. This is kind of a little karma though because me and you got a little thing. I got a little thing with you. So I seen you in the airport in Atlanta one day and you didn't remember me. But we have a mutual friend from way, way back in your early days when you started out. We ain't gonna go through it, but stop being stush, Envy. Stop who's, being stush. Who's a friend? And somebody would have <laughs> ran you down and told you that you would have left your bag, okay? Who's a, who's a, who's a friend? I'm going to say it on air. Say it. Now, I'll just say Dia. Is when Envy used to do oh. porn? Is when he used to do gay porn? I don't know who Dia <laughs> I, I, I don't remember who Dia oh, Bennett in the is now. Don't sound like that. You know what's so funny about this? I don't remember. This woman either. said it's karma because you didn't, you ignored her. In the no, no, not because I ignored her because I didn't remember her friend from way back. I don't know who D up Entertainment what, what is. What that got to do with you losing I, your shoe? I, I, I don't know. That's not, I don't know if D up was work. a promoter and they booked me one time. I don't know. I do so many shows a year. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know who D up Entertainment is. I'm going to tell you why. Today, you should, today. I'm going to tell you what's going to be funny. What's when NBC funny? somebody walking with his chain or his watch, that is going to be funny. <laughs> I'm glad you find this funny. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. Eight hundred five. If you see Envy chasing somebody down the street, just know <laughs> you know why he chasing. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. I lost some things at the airport. You, have didn't you lose lost some things. You have, lost a quarter million dollars of jewelry. Have you lost some things that's sentimental to you and it hurts? Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Come on. The Breakfast Club. Call me. Get your opinion to the Breakfast Club Top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, uh, I lost some things at the airport on Friday. And uh, he lost a quarter million dollars worth of jewelry. It's his kids' names, bro. And this is the crazy thing about it. Whoever wears that jewelry out, our board I've read just made a good point. You can't wear the jewelry out. It's Envy's kids' names. They're going to wonder why you got these random cities and these random people on your name. Like, you can't be walking in London, Brooklyn, Milwaukee. Um, what is it? Flint. 
What? What are you, you talking about, man? It's Peyton, <laughs> Brooklyn, okay. Jackson, London, yes. Madison, and Logan. You're going to look stupid with it out. Everybody going to know it's Envy's jewelry. Now, to bust down in the ring, you can get that off. Oh, and this is what gosh. I think is going to happen, Envy. Somebody going to return your kids, ch- uh, change. They're going to return the names. They're going to keep everything else. Watch. Uh, let's, That's let's, what's going to happen. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? This is Denasia. Hey, Denasia. Talk to us. All right, so for me, this happened my senior year of high school. My mom was being nice and wanted to give me something of my late father, who sadly passed away when I was four due to self inflict And I was in school. I was doodle bopping throughout the day, had the double bracelet around my neck. I thought I was pop sh-. I went to lunch. And my friend looked at my neck and was like, yo, where's your bracelet? I was like, what are you talking about? It's on my neck. I looked down, was gone. Mm. I walked around the school for probably two hours looking for this bracelet, asking people if they've seen it. I'm crying at this point. I was like, you know what? I'm going to class. I went to my last class. I was sitting in class for probably five minutes and I could not get this bracelet out of my head. So the first thing I thought to do was lift my shirt up and rip my brand new belly piercing out of my stomach. Why? To make me feel better. Oh my God. What you was a cutter? You like pain or something like that? Honestly, I have never felt harm a day in my life, but I would much rather have felt physical pain than the emotional oh, pain that man. it came from not having that last, that was the very last item of my damn. late father that I ever had a day in my life. I feel I'm sorry, sorry for you, you, mama. But I mean, you know, like, did you, clearly you never found the bracelet, but I mean, how do you? I, I never found the bracelet, but my best friend, Autumn, she did one thing that will forever live with me. She went and she got a photo of me and my dad before he passed away from my mom and put it on a gold chain for me and oh, gave it to me for our birthday. That was nice. That's incredible, man. Salute to Autumn. Yeah, salute to Autumn. She's you a great season. Mama. She had a great friend. I mean, I wish my friend would do something. That's what we'll do. Me feel good. Yo, Nick, um, get a picture of Envy and those chains. Yo, shut up, man. And I'm going <laughs> to put it on the wall in here. Yo, shut up. <laughs> Hello, who's this? It's Dee. Hey, D. Good morning. What, what did you lose? <sighs> okay, <laughs> I went to Vegas with a group of friends, and I always travel with my toy. A sponsor? Well, you say you always travel with your toy. Yes. Your vibrator. Okay, let's go. Yes. I've had it for like 12 years, and I left it in Vegas, and I cried about it. And then we placed it for like three months. For real? What size was it? It was just a, a, a massager. I'm surprised you couldn't find it with all the cats surrounding it. <laughs> I bet you I bet you was a bunch of cats around it. Cause they thought it was f- Why you gotta be some cats around it? Because it smelled like fish. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Y'all do a damn lot. Jesus Christ. D, I'm sorry you lost your, your vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> now you can buy another vibrator. You can buy man. another vibrator. Act, stop it. That, that ain't was hard her to baby. Get. That was I my... did. Oh. I know you did. And what kind of friend you went to Vegas it. with? Tell the truth. <clears throat> No, it was a group of friends. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what do y'all do in situations like that? Do y'all share vibrators? What? No, 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 no. Disgusting. Okay. Thank you, mama. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Like, <laughs> you, this, this is the Breakfast Club in a nutshell. You got people calling up here talking about how they lost things that are sentimental because it's their, you know, stuff that their deceased wives had, deceased fathers. And then here she come talking about, I left my dildo in Vegas. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Yo, it's Jack Jack from High Six Society. Good morning, Buckets Club. Good morning, hey, Jack, Jack, Jack. Jack. Yo, Envy, first hmm. of all, this topic is dumb because you really don't even want to know what we really lost because this is rich people stuff, okay? So you're going to take the platform and use it to hope that she's listening because you want her to bring it back to you. But Envy, nobody <laughs> leaves Cartier at the airport. You want to know why? Because nobody who works for nine to five goes to the airport wearing a Cartier. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Why would you do that? Damn. Jack, Jack, if I did it on purpose, I would feel a lot easier. But I didn't do it on purpose, Jack, Jack. you don't remember how to be broke. That's the problem. If you remember how to be broke, you wouldn't have never went to the airport with that. You're too bougie. But I'm so proud of you. You're so proud of yourself. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
calling that white lady spitting the post of that Cartier right now. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Jack, 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 you're not making me feel better. You're not making me feel good. You're not you making me feel warm and cuddly. Jack, 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 you got a point. Envy probably was beefing with the white lady talking about, I'm a diamond member. That lady looked in that jacket and saw them diamonds. You a diamond member, but you're going to be off some diamonds today. I'm done talking with you. Bye, Jack, Jack. You know what Jack, Jack sound like? Jack, Jack sound like this. Suck my d Y'all ain't going to never make it out the hood. Y'all ain't going to die, bro. F Jack Jack and F Soldier Boy too. How about that? How about both of y'all? Jack Jack and Soldier Boy, F y'all. Both of y'all together. There's no damn moral of the story. I don't want to talk about a moral. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is somebody going to give you back the change of your children. Everything else is gone, though. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the Rolex is gone. The bust down ring is gone. And I'm, I'm with Jack Jack. We don't feel sorry for you, bro. You got insurance. These are rich people problems, okay? 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 All right, when we come back, we got the your rumor report. Shout out to Trey the Truth, man. <laughs> oh, now you want to call Trey? I know you ain't about to call Trey. This shout is not a natural disaster. Shout out to Trey no, the this truth. is not a natural disaster. You about to call Relief Gang? <laughs> yes. And about to call Relief Gang to get his jewelry. Shout out to Trey the Truth. Trey the Truth did something special for a woman. <laughs> And we're going to talk about it when we come back. This is crazy. This is not funny. I don't know what's funny about this. Why are you? Everything is not funny. Oh, my God. A right, matter of fact, let's get to the rumors now. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. All right, shout out to Trey the Truth. Now, uh, Trey the Truth, I don't know if you remember, a couple of months ago, I think it was, we talked about this lady named Martha. Uh, out in Alabama, she was arrested because she didn't pay her seventy-seven dollar trash bill. That's nuts. Well, Trader True, uh, uh, Trader Truth came to the rescue. He uh, went out there, he paid for the trash bill, and he realized the house needed some assistance. So he actually did a lot of the house over: all new furniture, new couch, uh, recliners, a, a new bed, new dresses, uh, refurnished the whole living room, dining room, bedroom. Solved the problem of her uh, central heat and AC. So. Salute to Trade the Truth, man. Trade the Truth is a good brother, and I, I can't wait to see him again. You know, we do the car show each and every year in Houston with Trade the Truth, so salute to Trade the Truth. And uh, this is Martha actually thanking Trey. How'd you meet up with Trey to get your... I don't know. I can't tell you. All I know is the Lord sent him. The Lord always sends him. He sent him here. I didn't know what was going on there for a while. I said, well, Lord, why is all this happening to me? You know, through the law. Well, we love you, and we are so glad that he was able to help you. As yes. always, like, he's going to do what he can, and if you need anything... And he will. Yes. Whatever he say he's going to do. Yes, it's, it's, it's so, so easy. Trey. It's so easy to arrest people in this country when they commit crimes, unless, of course, your first name is Donald and your last name is Trump. And uh, I, salute to Trey, man. I never understood that. He, even as, uh, and I know a lot of officers out there probably feel what I'm thinking. There's no way as an officer you would go to a woman's house. Woman You're going to take jail for 87 year woman for $77. If, if anything, you know, uh, you pull a, a officer would come out of his pocket. Yes, yeah, you yeah, pull the $77 absolutely. out of your pocket. And it was two officers, if I can remember. Y'all could split that. Y'all could bust that down. Yeah, in the that, like, that's actually ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. $37 or $38 each, y'all could have did that and, and helped that lady. So she didn't have to go to jail. That's right. And Envy called Trey and Relief Gang to help him get his jewelry back. And uh, Trey told Envy, if you didn't lose your jewelry because of a natural disaster, I can't help you. He did not. I didn't call Trey for the jewelry, you idiots. Now, also, uh, last night was the 2023 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Did you see it last night, Charlemagne? No, I didn't. At least lies. iHeart, we're the same family. Yeah, man, it was amazing, There you yo. go, there you like, go. It was, wow. There you go. Who hosted? You know what I did see? I, I saw... Uh, <laughs> I saw pictures from it. Yeah, I did see I pictures. I did. From I saw too. Money Long was there. Hey, Money Long, she performed. You want to hear it? Let's go. When I met you, when I met you, I knew this is it. I've never been in love like this. A love like ours. I prayed for it on my knees. Okay. Every night was a mouse. Money Long performed. Uh, I saw her. Her was there, right? I seen her there. Um, who else did I see there? I saw uh, Doja Cat. Yeah, Doja. She won a couple of awards. Uh -huh. I saw Lotto. Lotto was there. Lotto was there. Let's see. That's horrible audio. Especially since it was our show. That's, that's the only audio we could get. That is terrible. Like, Jesus Christ. My God. I mean, yes. 
Uh, I saw Ice Spice was there. Yeah, Ice Spice was there. Uh, yeah, Chili and T Boz was there. Mm-hmm. And, Lenny Kravitz uh, was hosting and performing. Yep, and Coco Jones was there. I saw Coco Jones That's right. there too. Absolutely. So I saw all those pictures. That was our iHeart Radio Music Awards, and you can check it out. Uh, you can stream it on Hulu now. It was uh, last night on Fox. All right. And that is your rumor report. Now, don't forget, shout out to everybody out in Memphis. Memphis, you guys are really pulling up. May 28th, we're doing a car show in Memphis. The Love for the Streets. We're doing it with uh, Paper Route, which is Young Dolph's company and Young Dolph's estate. So we're going to have Young Dolph's fleet there. We're going to have the Young Dolph Museum there. Uh, we're going to have uh, rides, amusement rides, and jumpies, and face painting for the kids, music, uh, food, and all that. So I can't wait to see you guys. May 28th, if you haven't got your tickets or you want more information, click the link in my bio. And also, if you want to put your car or bike in the show. I want to see the cars that Memphis has. So if you got a dope car or surrounding areas, Mississippi, Arkansas, wherever you can, email me, djmvcarshow at gmail.com if you want to put your car, if you want to be a vendor or a sponsor, whatever it may be. And I can't wait to see you guys May 28th. Shout out to our family out in Memphis, K97. All right? People's Choice Mix is up next. Let's go. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Check out the new movie, Spinning Gold. The true story behind Casablanca Records, the most successful independent record label ever that gave us artists like Gladys Knight, Bill Withers, and Kiss. It's the greatest story never told with an unbelievable soundtrack. See it in theaters, Spin and Go, March 31st. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. And I want to salute to my brother, Leonard McKelvey. Behind the scenes, he said, "Envy, I see how hurt you are. I will pay for half of the jewelry taken. And that means a lot to me, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This audience been listening to Leonard McKelvey for 13 years. They know I ain't say no stupid shit like that. Okay? You didn't say that? Not at yeah, all. Yeah, he didn't say that? No, what I told you, dumbass, was I said, <laughs> I said, maybe God don't want you wearing no jewelry no more, so you should grow up. Okay? Now, I can't wait to see what God does in your life to make you stop sagging your pants. All right. I don't, I don't sag my pants anymore. Why? Tell them why. When that white man slapped you on your ass <laughs> and you didn't know what to do because you turned around and he was cock diesel. Tell him. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Aren't you going to be in Atlanta soon? I am. I'm going to be in Atlanta on April 22nd at Pullman Yards for the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival. Man, it's happening Saturday, April 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia at Pullman Yards. Uh, some of your favorite podcasts live will be on the stage. We got 85 South Show. We got Horrible Decisions with Mandy and Wheezy. We got uh, Reasonably Shady with um, Giselle Bryan and Robin Dixon. We got the Big Facts Podcast with Baby Jade and Big Bank and DJ Scream. Just to name a few of the podcasts that's going to be there. We got four Food. Music is provided by my guy Louis V. Salute to Louis V. And it's hosted by myself and my good sister Jess Hilarious, man. So make sure you join us April 22nd at Pullman Yards in Atlanta. And I really just got to thank um, everybody that's been buying tickets, man. Because if y'all keep getting tickets the way y'all getting tickets, we are definitely going to sell this thing out before the 22nd. And I want to salute uh, some of our partners too, man. Uh, AT&T Dreaming Black. Uh, Blue Moon, Coors Light, Nissan, uh, Simply Spiked, and State Farm. Thank you for sponsoring the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival, man. And I'll see y'all April 22nd in Pullman, at Pullman Yards in Atlanta. So make sure you go to Eventbrite to get your tickets and go to blackeffect.com for more information. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. I just want to remind you guys again, Memphis, May 28th, Memorial Weekend. You know, we do the big car shows all year long. I just try to get families together from young kids to, to adults to grandparents and all that. It's just a family fun day, and it goes down May 28th. It's rides, it's jumpies, it's cars, and May 28th is going to be special because we're bringing Young Dolph's whole fleet. I'm actually doing this car show with Young Dolph's uh, estate and, you know, his, his company. Company, of course, Amazing. paper route. So uh, I can't wait for you guys to see his uh, his fleet, his museum, and all the things that we're going to be. It's going to be a lot of special things in Memphis that day. So if you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. You can click the link in my bio, go to Event Noir or Event Bright, and I can't wait to see you guys. Now, Charlamagne, and, you got and, a positive and, note? And, and if, you, if you go there expecting to see Envy's jewelry, that's not going to happen, okay? You're not going to have no ice on that day. And that's Memphis. All them brothers going to be out there dripping in ice. Guess who's not going to have none? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and the positive note is simply this it's a quote from Winston Churchill uh, that I love so much you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks